Hello viewers and welcome to Learn It All. Did you forget to add SSH key to your EC2 instance? Or did you lose your SSH keys and wondering how to add a new key? Or did you just mess up the wpconfig.php file of your WordPress website and can't access the WordPress admin page anymore? Hmm, I guess you are the right place in that case. Today we will learn to add SSH keys for your EC2 instance. What is an EC2 instance? An EC2 instance is a virtual server in Amazon's Elastic Compute Cloud for running applications on AWS. You can view your EC2 instances by navigating to EC2 from your AWS console and clicking on instances. So let's do that. Let's go to EC2. and click on Instances. So what we are looking at is our EC2 instance, which is a virtual server that's running our website. So what is an SSH and why do we need it for our EC2 instance? SSH is typically used to log into a remote machine and execute commands which means you will need a SSH key associated with your EC2 instance in order to be able to connect and manage it. Typically, you will get to add SSH key to the EC2 instance when you first created the instance. But what if you never added one or lost the key? There are two ways of adding a new SSH key to your EC2 instance. The first method needs you to have an elastic Beanstalk ID connected to the EC2 instance. In order to check if you have an Elastic Bean associated with the instance, click on Tags and look for key name Elastic Beanstalk Environment ID. If you happen to find one, congratulations. That means you do have an Elastic Beanstalk for your EC2 instance. Step one, we need to create a new SSH key pair. For that, on the left hand side, you will see network and security and under network and security, click on key pairs. And click on create key pair. The format that we want is PEM or use with open SSH. And we'll give it a name as SSH key. And create the key pair. Now once you create the key pair, it's going to ask you to save the file. Okay, this is the only time you will get to save the file. So let's go ahead and save it. Okay, so we have saved the, the key file. And our new SSH key pair has been created. The next step is applicable to you if you have Elastic Beanstalk connected to your EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and go back to the EC2 instance and go to Tags and let's copy the value for the Elastic Beanstalk environment ID. Let's copy it and and navigate to Elastic Beanstalk. Now I have only one Elastic Beanstalk connected to the EC2 instance, but if you have multiple Elastic Beanstalk, you can paste 
the Elastic Beanstalk ID that you want to fix. There you go. And let's click on the environment. And on the left hand side, click on configurations. On the configurations, you will find security. Edit security. Now we need to attach the key pair that we just created to this EC2 instance. So under the drop down, select the new key that we created and click on continue and then click on apply configurations. So once you click on apply configurations, the new SSH key is going to get connected to your EC2 instance. And that is it, you're all set. You will be able to connect to your EC2 instance using the SSH key that we just generated. For now, I'm not going to click on apply configurations because I have to show you guys the second way of attaching a new SSH key to the EC2 instance. In case you do not have an Elastic Beanstalk connected to the EC2 instance, okay? So in order to do that, Let's go back to EC2 instance. The next step would be to create a recovery instance. So let's go ahead and launch it. And we have to ensure that the recovery instance is created under the same availability zone as the primary instance. Just make sure that it's free tier and click on configure instance details. Um, click on add storage, click on add tags and we'll give a name to the recovery instance. and click on configure security group the next review and launch and click on launch now it will ask us to select an existing key pair or create a new pair so we'll just um, select the key pair that we created a while ago and launch the instance The instance has been launched. Um, let's click on View Instances. And we can see that the recovery instance has been launched. And now we have two instances. One is the dynamic website. And the second one is recovery instance. Step number four would be to move the device volume from the main instance to the recovery instance. In order to do that, we first need to stop both the instances. Once both the instances have stopped, we need to detach the device volume from the main instance. In order to locate the device volume, we can select the main instance and under description, we can find the root device and click on it. Under actions, we can detach it. And then we can attach it to the secondary or the recovery instance. All right, let's go back to the instance. And if we go to the recovery instance, now under the block devices, we'll see two devices. This was the recovery instance device. And 
This was the device that we moved from the main instance, which is now listed as a secondary device. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, start the recovery instance. The next step would be to connect the recovery instance by PuTTY. If you do not have PuTTY, you can go to PuTTY.org and install it. You can pick from a 32-bit or 64-bit installer. Once you have uh, PuTTY installed, I want you to go to PuTTY Gen. And we have to use PuTTY Gen to convert the SSH key from .pem format to .ppk format. So click on load and make sure that you have all files selected and select the .pem key that we had downloaded from AWS console. And click on open. Okay. And then click on save private key. Click yes to that warning. And now we'll give the same name. And the format is .ppk. Click on save. We are all set. Close PuTTYGen. And go back to the in recovery instance. And copy the public IP. And then I want you to open PuTTY. And under hostname, type in ac2 user at the IP that we just copied, port number 22, and under SSH, go to auth, and load the SSH key that uh, we had created. At, this should be in the format .ppk. Open and open. Now you should be connected to the recovery instance. Um, sudo i for the root and then we need to create a recovery directory the recovery directory will be used to mount the secondary directory so if we do lsblk we can see that this is the primary directory which belongs to the recovery instance and this is a secondary device that um, we moved from the main instance to the recovery instance. And we will be mounting the secondary device into the recovery directory. Okay, let's do that. Okay, we have successfully mounted the device on the recovery directory. And then we need to copy the SSH key from the main instance to the recovery instance. In order to do that, we need to issue this command so that the authorized keys, which in this case is the SSH key, gets appended to the recovery directory. And the recovery directory, remember, it holds our uh, main instance device. Let's go ahead and issue the command. Okay. So now the SSH key has been copied from the recovery instance to the main instance. Now let's go ahead and unmount the, uh, the device. Okay, and we can exit. All right, now let's go to the recovery instances um, secondary device and we need to detach this oh before we detach we need to stop the recovery instance otherwise it won't allow you to detach the volume so let's go ahead and stop it okay so once the recovery instance is stopped we can go to the secondary device and detach it. And 
and then add it back to the main instance. Okay, let's go back and look at the instance now. And we can see that we have reattached the device to the main instance. And now this device has the SSH key from the recovery instance. We can verify that by starting the main instance Once the main instance has started, we can copy the public IP and open PuTTY. Hostname again should be EC2 user. At the IP that we copied, port 22. SSH auth should be the same key. And open and you can see that we were able to connect to the main instance using the new SSH key so this was the second method of adding or replacing a new SSH key okay that is it for today guys thanks for watching my video I'll see you in my next video And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for instant notification on new videos.